Have you ever wondered why there are so many different types of stabilizer? You have sticky, you have a topper, you have a floater. Hi, I'm Hope Yoder, and I'm with Embellish, manufactured by r k Distributing. And I want to clear up that mystery. I want to just talk about stabilizers, just overview. We have multiple videos you'll find under the resources material and the gallery on each product page. But I want to just demystify why Every company has so many stabilizers. So first of all, stabilizer. If you're new to embroidery watching this video, you should always use a stabilizer in the hoop, if you can, when you embroider something. And here's an interesting fact. Did you know that years ago, when I first started embroidering, when the first home embroidery machine came out, people told you to use all kinds of crazy things for stabilizer because there really wasn't much out there to use. And actually, r k Distributing was one of the first companies that came up and filled the need for the home market by making several different brands that you've probably heard of and you probably use, including Embellish. So crazy things. Did you know that they used to tell you, and there's probably still some crazy people out there telling you, oh, you could use coffee filters, or oh, you could use adding machine tape, or the craziest thing is toilet seat covers. Okay, well you deserve better than toilet seat covers with your embroidery. So let's just talk about how we've evolved and there's three different components I wanna talk about. Number one is the stabilizer, number two is the topper, and number three is the floater. And in that mix, you have different types of embroidery designs. A dense design, a medium to a light and an airy design. All right, let's get into it. So the reference materials I'm gonna kind of be referring to are on this four page handout reference material that I created for Embellish. And Kay Brooks and all of our educators really helped us come together to create this beautiful resource material that you can find on rnk embellish under resources. So please print this and there's also individual pages found inside of each stabilizer and under that resource site. But there's a picture right here and um, this first page is super important and it talks about 4x4 four four hoop, uh, design, stitch count, it gives you all of the embellished stitch counts of the categories of stabilizers that we use. So please print this, know it's here. This is an amazing reference, you guys. So the first page just is the basics of what I'm gonna go over now. And then there'll be series of videos where I'll take some of the most popular things that are now and happening that we see all over Pinterest. And in this column, we have fabric. And I don't mean fabric like cotton fabric because y'all that's boring you don't want to just do cotton fabric you've done that for years you want to know how to border on a t-shirt or a baby onesie or minky or maybe burlap maybe you want to sew decorative stitches and you're just sick and tired of it tunneling well all of this this is your recipe and it's free for the type of thing you want to put embroidery on what type of a design it is and then this gives you the solution number one the stabilizer number two, the floater, and number three, the topper. So let's get into it. Now I just have right here on the table toppers. We have two types and our embellished stabilizers usually come in different size rolls. The hoops are bigger to hold bolder designs and so we have 20 inch hoop, uh, 20 inch stabilizers and then we have anywhere and then 15 inch or a few little 12 inches. So you'll find all of that information later but I put the two toppers here because that's gonna be part of our discussion. All right, here's the question I get asked all the time. Why does everybody try to confuse us? You've got a regular stabilizer. And then you've got that same stabilizer with the name Fusible in front or in back of it. And if that's not confusing enough, then you have Sticky in the mix. And then you're talking about a floater. I don't even know what a floater is. Or maybe topper. You don't know what a topper is. It's like sprinkles on a cupcake. I don't know. So let's break it down. So on this reference material, right at the bottom, um, you'll see uh, a little text and it says, if you're using sticky rinse away mesh or sticky anything, you're gonna hoop the stabilizer only. So if I have anything with the name sticky in it, I'm gonna hoop that stabilizer shiny side up. No fabric, no nothing else. So the hoop would be hooped with the sticky. 
And then the sticky is a release paper, and that's the shiny side, and I'm just going to score it and remove it to reveal the sticky stabilizer. And you would use that on things that um, you can't hoop or that get hoop burns, like velvet. Velvet really doesn't like to take the heat of the iron, and it certainly doesn't like to be um, hooped because then you get these big crop circles or hoop circles in the velvet and you can't get those out. So that's why we have stickies for the unhoopable. Maybe you purchased a blank bookmark and it's too little to hoop or you have a fabric that will be crushed by hoop marks. That's why you have a sticky. Now, why do we have, let's take our bold tearaway, best tearaway on the planet. So that tearaway holds 12,000 stitches in a four by four hoop. We have a bold tearaway and we have a fusible bold tearaway. Why? Well, if you can fuse it, you should do it. Anytime you can fuse fabric and we have a fusible version of that stabilizer, pick that first. So you would fuse it to the back of your fabric and then you're going to hoop it as if it were one. So if you can fuse it, do it. If you can fuse it, do it. If you can fuse it, do it. Fuse it to the fabric and then hoop it. Makes sense, right? So that's why we have fusible bold tearaway or fusible soft cutaway. Get it? All right. Now, if that design has a lot of stitches in it, one layer may not be enough. That's the great thing about embellished stabilizers. We have more fibers in our stabilizer than just about anywhere else that you'll find. Almost everything is made in America. That's so important to me. You want to shop local. You want to support America. American jobs, American made. Now the other thing is these products are so premium and they're exclusive to your dealer. You're not gonna find them on Amazon. You're not gonna find them on your big box store. You're gonna find them in the local dealer because we're committed at r &K to keeping our local dealer in business. And in return, that's why they sell our product because not only is it the best on the market, but they wanna show you how to use it. They wanna train you on it. They wanna have fun with you and you want to support them. So look for any of the embellished products and embellish dealers across America. And you can find those links on our website. Well, we talked about if you can fuse it, do it. So let's talk about designs. Now I have this image here and you'll see this on the reference material that has a little hoop and it says it's a four by four hoop and the scenario reads like this. So this is like a riddle, remember in math? In a four by four hoop, if I told you that a four by four hoop would hold 12,000 stitches, then you told me, but wait, my design is an eight by eight design. Then how many stitches will it hold an eight by eight hoop? Now, if you're blonde like me, you may think, 24. And that's what I used to think. Honestly, y'all, that's what I used to think. And I had someone come up at an event and say, you know, that math isn't right. And I thought it isn't. She said, no, if you break it down to the square inch and blah, 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 blah. And of course, then I glazed over. And then Kim and I were talking and she said, let me show you. So she drew out this drawing. Of course, r &K cleaned it up and made it look pretty. But if you have 12,000 stitches and a four by four hoop, and then now you have an eight by eight design. It's like you have four mini four by four hoops. So it's 12,000 plus 12,000 plus 12,000 plus 12,000. So you can see this diagram here. That is actually 48,000 stitches. So if you go by the square inch, which none of us really care about unless you're a math major, it's not just multiplied by two, it's gonna be multiplied by four. So 10,000 stitches in a four by four equals 48,000 stitches and an eight by eight with one layer, one layer of stabilizer. That's amazing, super duper amazing. So you fused your stabilizer, but let's say in that eight by eight hoop, you have a dense design. And what I mean by dense is it's almost all filled stitches and the design is 60,000 stitches. Now that's not very uncommon and it sounds like a lot of stitches, but it's not really that much. So what would I do? I've fused, my a dense design requires our bold tearaway. So I'm gonna fuse it to my cotton fabric. I fused bold tearaway to the back of the fabric and I've hooped it. I'm gonna put my hoop on the machine, but I need another layer because I have more than 48,000 stitches in that eight by eight hoop in my dense design. Are you with me? All right, so I need something called a floater. 
floater, like you're floating on the river. So the hoops on the machine, picture this in your mind, the fabric and the stabilizer are fused, they are one, and now you need more support. You need to stabilize that fabric more. And you wouldn't want to use the fusible version, you would take the non-fusible version. So we have fusible bold tearaway, but now we're gonna put the non-fusible version and we're just gonna cut it the exact size of the hoop, or roughly-ish about, and then you're gonna just slightly lift up the hoop from the machine and you're gonna float the other non-fusible version of that stabilizer underneath. Now I've got 88,000 stitches. No, 52,000. See, I'm not good at math, but it's okay because I have this guide here and we gave it to you free. So we have our fusible version. If you confuse it, use it. We need more support because we have a dense design with more stitches. So we're gonna float the non-fusible version. Does that make sense? I'm thinking it does. Now a topper. Toppers, we have two choices. That's great because you got a 50-50 chance of picking one of the two. And honestly, sometimes they're interchangeable. There's a few things that aren't interchangeable like terry towels, and we'll get to that in a separate video. But a topper, why do you need a topper? Not just because I told you so, but because a topper is actually going to help level, here's the professional term. So the topper will help create a level embroidery feel, blah, 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 blah. What it really means is it's going to create a space, a spacer, a space between your fabric and your thread. And that way, when you do machine embroidery, the thread will never, ever, ever sink down into the fabric and get lost. Make sense? How many of you out there have ever taken your embroidery out of the hoop when you're done? You didn't use a topper because, you know, you just didn't use a topper. And you turn it upside down and you iron it on a terry towel or a felt pad. And you iron it and you pull it upside down so that when you turn it right side up, the thread pops and it lifts off the fabric because it was sunken down in and it looks better and you're happy. Well, you know what? If you will use a topper, you don't need to do that anymore. The topper will act as a spacer and it will give you that little bit of air, that little bit of space between your thread and your fabric. Doesn't that make sense? So three elements. We have our fabric that we're gonna hoop that's fused. If we need it, we're gonna put a floater, the non-fusible version, underneath. And then we're always gonna use a topper. And we only have two types. Water-soluble topper, don't forget to read um, the packaging and on the inside, and we have a video about this. But the water-soluble topper, it is called Embellish Rinse Away Clear Topper. This I use on probably 80% of my designs. So for instance, on this table, we have a beautiful quilt with some um, papery whimsy designs. I use the, um, the rinse away topper. And right behind me on this beautiful quilt, I have rinse away clear topper. And with that, uh, it's, if I'm gonna wash and use that quilt, it's gonna remain nice and soft and supple. So a rinse away topper is gonna to go on things that need to maintain drape, like a t-shirt, um, a cotton fabric. What it isn't gonna work for is a terry towel. When you embroider just a solid design, a name, a monogram on a towel, this rinses away 100%. So when you wash that towel, the fibers of the towel are gonna to come through the thread because there's no barrier. So in that case, we would use our Embellish Iron Away Clear Topper. Y'all, this never goes away. So you're gonna place it down and you're gonna pull it away and throw it away. And then this remains forever and a day underneath your stitches. So it creates that, that weed barrier, if you will. It keeps the fabric fibers from poking through the thread. So in an instance of a terry towel that's gonna to get washed again and again and again, this iron away topper is gonna to be a better choice. So you've got your fusible. If you can fuse it, use it. Then you've got your floater, which is the non-fusible version. Now with the sticky, where does that come in? Well, if you can't fuse the fabric, meaning it, again, it won't take the heat of the iron, then you're gonna use a sticky version. That's why we have sticky. That's why we have fusible. So you should have a wide assortment of fusibles and sticky in your arsenal of embellished product. 
So I hope that demystifies it. The last thing that I've not talked about is the design. So when you look at this reference, you're going to have design density and then you're going to have the stabilizer. And so you can see when you look at this reference material, it's going to say, what do you hoop? What did you float? And what did you top it with? All right, so I've explained those differences, but the density of the design, it's either going to be heavy, medium, light, and airy. So a dense design would be a big design that's almost entirely made of stitches, and you really can't see foundation fabric through the design. Makes sense. Now, a medium design would be heavy, dense stitching where you don't see the foundation fabric and maybe some wispy things over here where you can see the fabric through the stitches. So that's a medium design. It's made up of some light and airy and then some solid. So that would be called a medium. And light and airy, good example we all know and love is red work. Anything with little eyelashes or scrolls and you can see a lot of the foundation fabric in between the stitches, that is an open airy design. So keep all that in mind when you're using this reference material that is found in the resource section of rnk-embellish.com. <music>